Yes, so uh, we'll start with the uh, flexure parallel guiding. And uh, uh, this has a lot of application in uh, precision mechanisms or even in uh, uh, like uh, when you design any experimental setup and uh, you need a bond of uh, linear motion and uh, maybe the stroke is limited. So in that case, it's uh, very much there and uh, it's uh, extensively used. So uh, as the name suggests, it's a parallel guiding and uh, we use flexures. So two leaf uh, springs, we can use it in parallel fashion. And uh, what do you realize that when you have two leaf springs, you know, so I think uh, just extend uh, the, the exercise we did that we have uh, two flexures like this, uh, and then it's extend, uh, we have in the other dimension. So what will happen that, so maybe I'll put double line so that, but it's still this cross section is, the thickness is small so that it can bend, can flex. So, any motion if we give, uh, we should should be able to move it. So that's the idea. And uh, I think earlier we also discussed that um, although we have uh, two leaf springs, one and two, constraining three three degrees of freedom, but still there will be one degree of freedom which will be always there you cannot constrain all six degrees of freedom and uh, the uh, over constraint and uh, the degrees of freedom what is left is uh, they are uh, they are in the same direction of course the rotation and translation it will exchange in this case what will happen that what you can assume that they are intersecting at infinity, right? So it means, okay, so at infinity means it rotate at infinity, right? And rotation at infinity at infinite radius is translation, right? So you, that's the thing you can assume, you can say it's just trans, translation. So I think uh, uh, this is uh, very important and you always remember two leaf springs, they cannot constrain anybody completely. There will be one degree of freedom and there will be one over constraint. And the, the, in this case, the over constraint is out of the plane translation. It's uh, uh, constrained by both the leaf springs. So it says that parallel displacement in a plane and if been an approximate state guide. Now why we are saying approximate, you will realize soon. Huh? And uh, relatively small stroke we are talking about, it's made of two parallel sheet flexures. And equivalently, you know that we can have five wire flexures huh? arranged and just to discuss if you want to discuss degrees of freedom. So if you go for uh, exact constraint design. So you apply force F and there will be displacement X along this direction. So this is the compliant diagram. Uh, what, what is, uh, what you also observed is the shortening effect. Yeah? So I've written in, in this uh, uh, blank space, but okay. remember this, uh, this term, shortening effect. And what happens that when you move, when this body moves, actually, if you just assume like this, actually, yeah, so there will be a little dip. So uh, associated with this movement, we'll have a little movement along this direction also. So suppose this, this is X and this is Y. Y is not in, in motion, so you cannot say that is a uh, degree of freedom. X is the independent motion, uh, independent degrees of freedom you can call it. And Y is the parasitic motion. And in this case, the drawback is 
there will be a small parasitic motion. Uh, there will be wide displacement associated. So you have to be aware of that. And if uh, that concern, then okay, we have to look for some other designs. Uh, so there, there are some design based on the principle. So uh, yes, uh, starting from the neutral position, which is like passing through the center, right? Central axis, the body movement in the x direction, and that will accompanied by a negative y, y, y direction. That's called shortening effect. Okay, so this is what uh, I was talking about. And uh, if if I talk about this displacement, actually it's uh, of the order of delta x square by L. So for any small movement in x direction, you can approximate. So uh, it's, uh, if, if you just use a cantilever case and uh, both hands clamp, actually you can very much uh, derive it, assuming that this uh, delta x is small. So then you can use uh, approximation and uh, trigonometry like uh, tan theta tends to theta or sine sin theta tends to theta or cos theta will uh, tends towards one. So that kind of uh, approximation can be used and you can be, you will be able to derive that, that function. So when you have to design this kind of uh, flexure guiding mechanism, what are the things you will be looking for, right? What are the mechanical behavior you will be interested in? So of course, uh, in the compliant direction, so this is the compliant direction x in the compliant direction. What is the stiffness? Because this is something like uh, you get when you uh, apply a force or when you have an actuator. So actuator is uh, like uh, giving you the desired motion in the compliant direction. So what will be the forces acting ag against uh, when you are moving? Because uh, it's because of the elastic deformation. So uh, then definitely there will be some stiffness. So CX, we call it CX, that is involved. And because of that, whatever deformation is there from the neutral position, uh, you'll have a force, force acting on the actuator. So when you are talking about the uh, actuator forces or talking about the dynamics, you have to also include this force, elastic force, right? This is uh, about the performance, but when uh, you have to design, you have to also ensure that the maximum bending stress is uh, when it moves in X direction. And for the given stroke, what is the bending stress developed, right? So of course you do the calculation and you will try to find uh, what is sigma level. Eh? If it's a fatigue loading, and then you try to find the fatigue stress, right? What is the stress limit it can take? But really, you need to calculate the maximum bending stress. And that will limit the stroke, right? Because larger the stroke for the given, uh, given geometry, the sigma B, the bending stress will limit your stroke, right? So uh, this is very important because uh, we don't want that the thing should fail. So you have to talk about uh, the stresses develop. This is about the stiffness. Uh, of course, I think many times we forget and uh, uh, we may like just discuss about the two parameters C and sigma. B. But sigma y, sigma y and maybe sigma z also. Uh, so those are the constructions. constraint directions, what is the capacity, what is the load capacity, what is the stiffness, because that is stiffness has to be very big, because uh, you want compliance in one direction, that is direction, but in the other direction, it should be rigid, as good as, like uh, it's a rigid support, but okay, nothing is rigid, so the, in terms of a stiffness, it should be much higher. Eh? So then what do you realize that we are talking about all the six top, all the six six directions. And then if you're talking about the six, then we have six by six components of C matrix. Uh, 
so what are those components and like in the compliant direction it will be small but in other direction this the stiffness matrix the values will be really high right and uh, whether it's a couple or like diagonal matrix that, that we have to check so many times i think uh, the at least these three cx C, uh, sigma b and cy that the uh, bearing stiffness or the guiding stiffness we have to talk about so uh, very simple case again uh, starting with the bending equation cantilever and then uh, both clamps because okay so we are talking about parallel guidance so the way it moves, you realize that both hands are clamped right and it's moving in that way so, uh, we try to write the general equation so i think you can check whether this is true for any cantilever so you apply force f and then moment m right so under this two forces m and f and m the corresponding displacement are delta x and sigma right so this is your so this is f versus C, X, right? So these are like bold faces, right? So vectors. So F means FM and X means X bar means delta X and sigma. And uh, I think uh, uh, just practice and you will be able to find these components. So in this case, how to, how to derive the expression for this? How to derive for CX? So you know that uh, boundary conditions, your it it has to be zero, right? So when you play it, what do you get? Huh? So uh, you'll get if you apply f, c x, and uh, this delta x, right? So you should be able to find, and from here you can find that c x is twelve e i by l q in this case. Yeah. So for simple, uh, for fixed ends, for one leaf spring, what you have to remember is one leaf spring. For one leaf spring, you put, put a boundary condition and what you get CX is 12 EI by LQ. So I'm emphasizing again, this is for one spring, one leaf spring. When you talk about this configuration, what you have is two leaf springs in parallel. So if I'm talking about guiding stiffness, right? So I, I think maybe uh, this might be confusing. So what I would say, what is the stiffness in the X direction? For this parallel guiding, so in this case, if you talk about, this is for one leaf spring, right? For the other one, if it's for parallel guiding, CAC dot or parallel, if we, it will be two CX, right? Always remember, because the, the, uh, that's the, here uh, most of the students most of the people make mistakes okay if it's asked about the parallel guiding then you have to multiply by two okay the stresses stresses will be same okay in bo both the springs uh, both the sheet flexures so the maximum bending stress uh, that will happen at the clamps right and this piece and this will be so again very simple, I think uh, you apply that formula, sigma by y is equal to m by i equal to a yeah, r, right? Very simple equation, bending equation. If you remember, you can always derive. Mm -hmm. So you try to find uh, mx uh, at different uh, points and then uh, uh, you will be able to calculate sigma values. Yeah? So what is the maximum bending moment and corresponding to that, you'll be able to get for given displacement delta x 
what is the stresses develop so what do you realize here that the stresses they are the function of if it's uh, like uh, if you assume that everything is constant is directly proportional to delta x eh? so for given geometry eh? it's a limited the your stroke is limited by the by the stresses developed you don't want it to fail right and that you have to remember so when we say q uh, when we ask for maximum stroke then uh, the guiding principle should be your failure failure criteria okay when is going to fail and uh, the for the failure i think what is important is you have to know what is the sigma allowable right the maximum sigma allowable so mm -hmm. it can be equivalent also and then you have to calculate it back so always remember that uh yes so uh, another point is uh when you are talking about the uh, parallel guidance right uh, if you just uh, look at the geometry you may feel that okay you can apply force in in that direction in the compliant direction it will move was the was a big deal right but if you look uh, look at it closely it it can't be like that you you can't just apply that force f anywhere anywhere means whether here or here huh? so where what is what should be the line of action right what is the uh, location so suppose you want to study that what you do is like from the bottom of a uh, floating member suppose you parameterize and suppose your force is acting at a distance a from the bottom of the, and l is the length of the flexures so what do you realize that if you start writing the or uh, if you just uh, uh, make the free body diagram of the individual leaf spring one and two, what you realize that okay, if you, if they are, you assume that they are identical, right? So this O F force F is like divided equally, right? F by two, F by two, in that direction, right? Uh, okay, moment wise also you assume that. Okay, since uh, they are similar, uh, same, identical, you can assume that the moments are also equal and they are in the same direction. But there will be forces in the vertical direction as well, n1 and n2. Uh, why they have to be in the opposite direction? Because if you just take this part, there is no external force there is no external force acting there is no fy fy is zero here right so it means the net force acting along y direction on this green board it should be equal right so they will be equal and opposite right and okay of course then you have to write the equations right at any point if you take this to write what you realize this is equal this is equal but you also find that the more uh, this n1 and n2 are also equal but they are opposite so just by looking at the loading at the uh, two flexures one and two you realize that at this point the loadings are not same okay this is same you can i can also say this is same but this is not same this is like this and this is like this so just by looking at it what you realize that the external loading the loading at the ends are not same so therefore you can't say that the deformation be also same no matter how small but there will be differential formation there will be different kind of loading and associated with that, there will be different deformations and because of that what will happen it will rotate as well although it may not be apparent but when you start looking at it so you also do the moment uh, balance and then you realize that this is the expression now looking 
have the in individual uh, leaf spring mm -hmm. and uh, go back to the, your fundamental equation uh, with the force and moment and uh, what will be the expression of psi, right? Phi, yeah. And that you want it because it's a parallel guidance, so say it's a zero. And for zero condition, what you, what, then you get extra condition. And this will lead to this expression. So then what will be the N, this forces in the Y direction, hmm? the reaction forces in the Y direction. And it's related to F, but it's also function of A, A and B, right? But you realize. So if you want to have purely translation, purely translation, but no rotation. So suppose you don't want that after some time you shape, right? So you don't want any kind of this phi rotation. So you want, it, it has to be zero, right? And for zero condition, this is what you get. And this will happen only if n is zero, right? If he is n is zero, by some means, this is what you get. And then the, your the, uh, forces at the ends will be identical. And then you can claim, OK, it's, uh, it will be the same, right? It means moment, okay, is there any, any way you can make it zero, right? So what you realize that if you want it to be zero, then what is required? L by 2 plus A is equal to 0, right? If this term in the bracket becomes 0, then it's a 0. It means A is equal to minus L by 2, right? So if this A is minus L by 2, then you'll get no rotation. It means if you apply force F, you'll have zero rotation and you have only translation in that direction. And minus L by 2 means this direction, right? A was positive, positive, this A negative. And this is L by 2, so half of the length. So if you apply the force at P, which is L by 2 from the base of the green, green part, point or maybe from the clamp point, you'll get F and associated with that, you will have only X or delta X, right? There will be, phi will be zero. There will be no rotation. And that's why it's also called center of compliance. So you apply force at this point, you purely delta X, there will be no rotation and that's why it's called center of compliance. So if you apply force F, if you place your actuator at, at this point, then you'll get only linear motion, right? So what is saying, otherwise what will happen if you apply force like this, it tends to dip, so it tends to rotate. So it, it's going like this after deformation, right? Because this is what it means, right? Phi is. So the most appropriate position for the point of application of force. So if you want to place your actuator, this is the point. It should apply your your actuator should be. So suppose any any motor or anything you want to put, right? So it should apply a force at this point, right? So that it passes through the center of compliance. In other words, the line of run for F goes through the middle. Middle of the springs. Again, uh, I was uh, talking about this uh, CX. So in this case, this CX is for the parallel guidance. It's not for one leaf spring. Here I'm talking about parallel guidance. 
So you call it C total, uh, total X, right? In the X direction. So you have to multiply by two. So it will be two times C of individual leaf spring. Okay. And which is two times 12 EI by LP. Always remember this term huh? because there are two. Okay. So this is the stiffness. Of course, I think if you are dealing with the uh, um, uh, dynamics, what will be the other forces? One is the actuator force. Uh, okay, in a uh, static condition also, you'll have a, a CZ, the weight is acting. Huh? Suppose if it's vertical, if the direction is like this, then you have to also make sure that it, uh, the CZ should lie here, but also, not only the center of gravity, but center of mass. Yeah? That should also coincide. Otherwise, you'll have a bending moment when you are accelerating. Right. One uh, very important property, uh, I think, uh, when you are uh, designing this thing and going for a larger stroke, what you have to also remember this the the guiding stiffness, the bearing stiffness, I would call it, the loading directions. Yeah? So one is the compliant direction in which you are moving, right? So X direction in this case. But uh, what about the uh, stiffness in Y direction, right? So uh, which is supposed to take the load, right? So if you have some uh, weight on top of it and it has to move, Actually, the CY is not constant, right? And uh, and it's not even linear. Huh? So uh, that you have to be aware of. So that uh, means it should not happen that uh, you design and then suddenly after some moment it will just collapse, right? Because the stiffness will decrease drastically. So, and uh, there is a condition also. So you also assume that okay it's only offset but still supported by rigid by some other means right so there is some delta x deformation and then so you, if you have a uh, installed like this and then you are putting a load huh? so okay the actuator is able to provide you that stiffness huh? so when it's locked the stiffness is very high so you can assume that it's a rigid kind of thing but it, at this position, what will be the value of CY? And what do you realize here from this plot? Or, okay, the, this is the maybe uh, expression you can get. And there is a highly nonlinear. And what do you realize that five times, even five times, this is a function of H. H is the thickness of this. So even if you uh, move five times, it has decreased to 70 percent right what happens if you go to 10 it's very small and if you suppose 15 times the stiffness reduced to 20 percent only right so suppose if you have designed everything and so if you are not getting the stiffness you have to check whether it has deflected there is a, some deformation already because if you uh, H is very small, then even a small deformation delta X uh, and C in times even 10 times, 10 times already uh, reduces it to half, more, more than half. Huh? So maybe 35 percent only, right? Even five times is going to 70 percent. It means you have to really check after, after putting things together, you have to check what's happening, right? And or you have to be aware of that as you are moving from the neutral position, you have to be aware of this and uh, you may get lower stiffness in the bearing direction. And in many applications, in many cases, uh, you see that the idea is mainly to maximize this stiffness over a length, over a stroke, or maybe to make it uh, linear. And how to do that, there are a lot of research papers uh, by uh, Professor Dennis Brower. I think he is working on that. And there are a lot of new designs where you can get a very flat curve over, over a 
large stroke. So you can uh, design a very good uh, parallel guiding uh, flexure, flexure, uh, flexure stays. What happens if it's not rigid? So in, it has certain CD, right? So we are talking about this case only, right? In the previous, we, are, we assume that this stiffness is very high. This stiffness is very high, right? Now, what happens if it's not? It's not the case. So this case is saying that it, there is no stiffness. It's a freely floating. So you can see that decrease is even faster. Huh? In this case, it's a here. So if you talk about five times, but you realize you are here, but if it's open, then it's way, way higher. Right? It's a logarithmic plot. You can see, you know? so very much, much apparent. Uh, so for different uh, uh, values, CX values, even this uh, CY is dependent. Yes, I think uh, one of the things you have to be aware in this uh, kind of uh, uh, parallel guidance, you know that there is a work constraint. So one of that, that is uh, phi one rotation, ten twice, right? So if you try to rotate along X, you cannot rotate. And it's constrained twice, right? And, and that's the reason you also get the translation degrees of freedom in the same direction, right? So it, for both, it's matching. And that's why you are able to get that X translation, right? So it's not getting constrained either of them. But here, the assumption is they are parallel. What happens if it's parallel? So if it's not parallel, still you will have a certain degree of freedom, one degree of freedom, but it may not be translation exactly. So what happens if you want to translate and if, if they're not parallel, you will also feel the stiffness, varying stiffness in that direction. So what will happen if you place an actuator and, or if you try to uh, measure the stiffness in that direction, then you will, get higher value because of the component of the cy cy or cz which is reflected in cx because of any uh, parallel issue if they are not perfectly parallel and that you have to be aware of and many times try to tune it you try to make it adjustable so that you can see so there are some experiments uh, i'll talk about uh, you you can uh, see, so, but if you want uh, exactly constant design, one of the ways is okay. You put uh, holsters in one of them and reinforce, right? So you reinforce and to get rid of the rotation part. So here the it can translate, right? It can move along this direction, right? But the translation here is possible, right? Uh, rotation here is a constraint but here is a free uh, so you release so this is one of the other way is through this uh, uh, cross crossbar right cross uh, i would say yeah cross 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 section a uh, square cross section uh, and, uh, we should not call, call it a square it's a cross right so this is torsionally compliant so again you release a uh, Phi rotation, and then uh, you will be able to get uh, exact constant design. Uh, equivalent is, of course, uh, five wire flexure component. So these three, these three will be the back, back, the three wires on the back will be equivalent to uh, one one leaf spring like this, and uh, in the front two will be equivalent to another leaf spring. Uh, Make it like this with the cut, right? So, uh, again, I think, uh, yeah, we are talking about this expression. So, okay, if you have a, a just a rigid, a rigid link, you can directly get it. Huh? 0.5, but if it's not, then you will get 0.6. Huh? 
So delta y is the parasitic motion. And the, here is the derivation. So cos z by L you can, can get, right? Uh, of course, if you are not happy with the shortening it and uh, if you don't want any shortening effect, if you are not okay with this delta y, then what you do is you connect it back. So use intermediate body H, connect it. So gray is your rigid one. And the B, B is what you want to move, but you want only purely X movement, right? So you don't want any Y movement, right? You don't want any Y movement. So for that, what you did, you connect an intermediate body and connect it back. So what happens? This compensate delta Y. So through one, you get minus through one, or you get plus, and then they will cancel each other. Of course, they have to be identical, but, but I think uh, you get purely X motion, but in this, this is the intermediate body you have. One thing you have to also realize now four, uh, but you have to also see the sequence, whether they are connected. So from uh, gray to uh, blue or green, you have two and from there to orange, there are two. Uh, so there are series and parallel combination. You have to, take. and then accordingly you have to find. If I'm talking about C X, what is the stiffness? You should be able to calculate it back. Uh, okay, I think uh, the the I think rest of the slide is uh, about the reinforcement. So maybe I'll. Uh, I'll discuss this thing in 